This is Twit. I've got something for us all to sing about spontaneously. I don't know if you've seen the uh, the video created by Marquez Brownlee. Marquez Brownlee, of course, is a, uh, a very well-known YouTube uh, personality who who he tests a lot of mobile devices. He does some really nice videos, uh, uh, reviewing phones especially. And he posted a video yesterday showing what he says is an iPhone 6 screen made with Sapphire. And he was shanking it with a knife pretty hard there and scratching <laughs> with the keys. And the thing is that came the technical term, Mike? Yes, it is. Uh, I learned it in prison. Um, but he, he did an, a pretty abusive uh, test on this screen. He, again, just the screen, not, not a whole phone behind it, just the, just the so-called Sapphire screen. And it didn't have a mark on it. He was bending it. He was stepping on it. He was stabbing it with a knife, a very sharp knife. And uh, this looked very impressive. He also, in this part of the video, as we're seeing here, uh, how did if he you're get watching it? Video, uh, he didn't say. Oh. <laughs> no, he, he got it from uh, Sonny Dixon, who's in Australia, who has oh, that's right. he did with the Chinese um, parts to suppliers. That's right. He did say. He also talked about the clarity, and that was a point of controversy about Sapphire. Of course, that the people were saying it was going to not not uh, let enough light through, and it was uh, inferior to regular glass or Gorilla Glass. But this uh, looks uh, pretty good. Um, uh, what do you think about this, Renee Ritchie? Is this um, is this going to be transformative for the for the iPhone, assuming that this is legit? Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit like reviewing that that brand new Lego block that's going to ship later this month with that brand new Lego set. In that it's it's completely out of context, and it can be a magnificent new Lego block. But uh, you know, like you pointed out, there's a lot of questions. It's not attached to a phone yet. I think on the face of it, it it looks great. Uh, Sonny Dixon has a great reputation for for getting legitimate Apple parts from the Chinese supply chain. So I mean, it's it's likely that it's an authentic part. Whether it's a final part or not, it's hard to say. Um, but sapphire glass. I mean, it, a lot of experts have said for a long time that that is where we need to go to have the sort of large size, thin size, strength and flexibility that we need. And based on Marquez's test, it looks like we're getting that. And of course, Sapphire Glass uh, has been in use by Apple uh, uh, in front of the mm -hmm. camera and also and in front ID. of the fingerprint yeah. reader, uh, where it's very important to have a very accurate uh, and very durable, and no scratches and so on. So they, they've been using this for a, lot, a while. There have been reports for, it seems like, more than a year about Apple hoarding Sapphire and right. building plants and hiring invested people. invested heavily. And they've got patents and so on. One of the interesting patents, uh, they've also made an acquisition or two around uh, Sapphire production. But one of the interesting patents that they have, which is uh, a, a patent for sapphire, a Sapphire laminate, which the idea of you have a very thin layer of, of Sapphire bonded to a piece of glass, which enables the part to be thinner uh, lighter and uh, clearer. And we don't know whether this is an example of a sapphire laminate or not. We really don't know what this technology is exactly. Uh, but, uh, but um, you know, do, do, we think, uh, do we think that uh, Andy Anako, whether this is um, uh, something that is going to be um, uh, revolutionary and difficult to copy by other companies, uh, Android uh, handset makers, for example? Hard to say because as tough as that thing is, the question is, how tough does that have to be? We're watching him bend it over the tip of his shoe right now. And essentially, there are things inside the iPhone that are not as flexible as that. And they will break along before you do that. Uh, I've got my, uh, my, my iPhones in my pocket. I've got also all my, a Nexus 5 that I carry usually inside my pocket with no screen protector on it. And that doesn't have really any scratches on it after about a year of daily, uh, of daily carry. So it's great that they're choosing this superlative product. Anything that, that will protect the screen and keep this thing looking pretty is going to be good for users. I'm actually, there are two things that I'm, that I, that are larger takeaway from this video for me. First of all, we're seeing uh, we're, this is this is usually the time of of year when we would expect to start seeing parts kind of slip out of security and make some of these September and October announcements look more real. So now I don't think there's anybody who would doubt that this is going to be uh, the size of one of the one of the new iPhones. The second thing is, as I kept looking closely at that video. I couldn't help but notice that the corners of that screen are not squared off. There's uh, the, that cover. They're not squared off. They're rounded over, which made me think that if is this actually going to be part of the the actual profile of the finished product? Are they, are they making something so thin that they're not going to have a band of metal that encapsulates that cover that is going to be fastened over the actual display uh, and that we're going to see sort of this little bubble effect uh, that goes around the sides of it? Uh, who knows? Because uh, as Renee said we're seeing something completely out of context here but that really does make the mind wonder a little bit 
For what yeah. it's worth, two years ago, I heard that the iPhone 6 would have a similar design to the iPod Touch. And then last year, that because of all the new gestures, like back gestures and stuff, that they were experimenting with making the corners smoother so that when you do the bezel gestures, you wouldn't feel a sharp edge under your fingers. Yeah. Well, and, and I think that one of the things that, uh, you know, Apple, obviously this keeps on pushing that, that the high end up. So this is more expensive to make. There, there's a lot of patents that slow people down. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that, that if someone is looking for the best phone they can possibly get, um, this is something that they may have to start adding. It might be a feature that a lot of us are, you know, a lot of us have scratched up our phones, or, or, you know, uh, often enough that that is something that people might might buy against. And you can, you know, a lot of the reports out in the last week have been about how Samsung is basically getting squeezed between Chinese manufacturers um, and, and Apple, you know, where you have low end stuff coming up and the high, and Apple really looks like it's very focused on maintaining the top of the heap yep. by continuing to add those technologies and making, you know, everybody else fight for the the rest of the market.